Hello! This session is about architecting .NET microservices in a Docker ecosystem. I am Hamid Arbeai, Senior Cloud Application Architect, awarded by Microsoft as Most Valuable Professional in Developer Technologies. I am also Azure Certified, Microsoft Certified Trainer, Author, Speaker, Contributor and a member at .NET Foundation. Thank you for joining me today on DockerCon. We will discuss during this session the architecture, design and implementation approaches using .NET and Docker containers. We will start by presenting microservices architecture, next an introduction to container and Docker. We will see after the difference between Docker container and Docker image. We will set up our local environment to be ready to our demo. Microservices are the natural evolution of service-oriented architecture but there are differences between microservices and the service-oriented architecture. In a microservices architecture, services are small and dependent and loosely coupled. Each service is a separate code base which can be managed by a small development team. Services can be deployed independently. A team can update an existing service without rebuilding and redeploying the entire application. Services are responsible for persisting their own data or exter external states. These differ from traditional model where a separate data layer handles data persistence. Services communicate with each other by using well-defined APIs. Internal impl implementation details of each service are hidden from other services. Services don't need to share the same technology stack, libraries, or framework. Besides for the service themselves, some other components appear in a typical microservices architecture. Management and in the management component is responsible for placing services on nodes, identifying failure, rebalancing services across nodes, and so forth. Service discovery maintain a list of services and which nodes they are located on, and enable service lookup to find the endpoint for the service. And we have the API gateway, that is the entry point for all clients. We will see more in detail about that after. Developers consider microservices as architecture style that promote the development of complex application as a suite of small services based on businesses' capabilities and multiple independent subsystems in the form of anonymous services. This picture shown the microservices architecture style. There are various components in microservices architecture apart from the microservices themselves. We start by the management. We talked about that before. It maintained the node for the services. We have also the identity provider manages the identity information and provide authentication service within a distributed network. The service discovery keeps track of services and service addresses and endpoints. And we have the API gateway that serve all clients entry points. It's the single point of contract from the client which in turn returns responses from underlying microservices and sometimes an aggregated response from multiple underlying microservices. So, API Gateway sits between clients and services. It acts as a reverse proxy, routing requests from client to services. It may also perform various cross-cutting tasks such as authentication, SSL termination and rate limiting. If you don't deploy a gateway, client must send requests directly to front-end services. It creates a coupling between the client and the backend. The client needs to know how the individual services are decomposed. That makes it harder to maintain the client and 
also harder to refactor services. A container is a useful resource allocation and sharing technology. It's something DevOps people get excited about. A microservice is a software design pattern. It's something developers get excited about too. So, there is a difference between microservices and container. They are not the same. In other words, we can sum this up as microservices are about the design of software container are about packaging software for development. So we can choose uh, whether to use a container by hosting or microservices. But to get full value from both, it's significantly better to run microservices within uh, containers. Deploying an entire application to a single virtual machine introduces a single point of failure risk. Whether or not a microservices architecture has been used. By spreading the application through microservices across multiple containers re result in full exploiting the value of both by providing resilience as well as agility through scaling and improvement targeting specific services without negatively impacting the entire application. Flexibility is also introduced in that developers can write application in any language C-sharp, Java, in any language of their choice, since the container will allow them to deploy across whatever environment is provided. Efficiency comes from containers using less research compared to virtual machines. Another benefit comes in the form of security through isolation and a broadened attack surface that limits the impact should a single microservices or container be subject to a security breach such as a hacking attack. Containers and Docker Containerization is an approach to software development in which an application or service its dependency and its configuration are packaged together as a container image. The application in container can be tested as a unit and deployed as a container image instance to the host operating system, just as shipping container allow goods to be transported by ship train or track regardless of the cargo inside. Software containers act as a standard unit of software deployment that can obtain different code and dependency. Containerizing software this way enables developer and IT professional to deploy them across environments with little or no modification. Containers are, are isolating applications from each other on a shared operating system. Container application run on top of container host that it run on uh, operating system like Linux or Windows. Containers therefore have a significantly smaller footprint than virtual machines images. Each container can run a whole web application or a service, as shown here in our example, Docker host in a container host and application, first application, we have the second application, the first service and the second service are containerized application or services. Now we see the difference between Docker container and Docker image. A Docker container is virtualized runtime environment used in application development. With Docker we are able to create, run and deploy applications that are isolated from the underlying hardware. A Docker container can use just one machine, share its kernel, and virtualize the operating system to run more isolated processes. So Docker containers are lightweight. A Docker image is like a snapshot in other types of virtual machine environments. It's a record of a Docker container at a specific point in time. Docker images are also mutable. While they can't be changed, they can be duplicated, shared, or deleted. The feature is useful for testing new software or configuration because whatever happened, the image remain and changes. Container require the existing runnable images to exist. They are dependent on images because they are used to construct runtime environment and are needed to run an application. 
You may want to use Docker container just to simplify deployment even if you are not creating microservices. For example, perhaps you want to improve your DevOps workflow with Docker containers, can give you better isolated test environments, and also eliminate deployment issues caused by missing dependency when you move to a production environment. In, ca in case like this, uh, even if you are deploying a monolithic application, it may sense to use Docker and Windows container for your, your current .NET Framework application, for example. In most cases, for this scenario, you will not need to migrate your existing application to .NET 6. You can use Docker containers that include the traditional .NET framework. However, a recommended approach is to use the latest framework .NET 6 used today as you extend an existing application such as writing a new service in ASP.NET Core. Let's prepare our environment for uh, running containers locally and for that uh, we need to follow our these steps. Um, we need to install Docker Desktop, it's free and available for Mac, Windows and Linux. Uh, we need to create an account on Docker Hub, it's free too. This is the link uh, here, we can see the link docker.com. We have Docker Desktop, uh, Windows, Linux and uh, Macintosh. And uh, we can create a Docker Hub uh, here. We click on Sign Up, uh, and we introduce all information needed to create this account. It's free, as I said before. We need to install Visual Studio 2019 and Visual Studio 2022. Uh, here we have uh, the Docker Desktop installed already. As you can see, we don't have any container, even any images. We can click on Restart Start Docker check this one desktop when you log in when you open your machine it will be connected and we enable kubernetes if we need to use orchestrator in our case click after on apply and all configuration needed is updated as i said before we need to install visual studio and we need an account on azure because we will use azure container registry we need powershell or azure cloud shell and if we use uh, Visual Studio Code, we need uh, to add uh, these extensions, C Sharp, uh, Docker, and App Service, if we will deploy an App Service. Now we will build uh, Docker images. We will open Visual Studio 2022, I will use. We click on Create a New Project. I will select ASP.NET Core Web Apps. I click on Next. I add the project name, we select the location, and here we will check uh, Enable Docker, we can select uh, the Docker operating system. In our case, I will select Linux. We will do the same thing for uh, ISP.NET Core Web API, because today our application is based on multiple APIs and ISP.NET Core MVC application. So we here we have use uh, control, we will use uh, minimal APIs uh, in our APIs. I go back, uh, I will open uh, my solution that uh, we will deploy today to uh, Docker. We have uh, this solution, it's uh, conference management. I have multiple APIs, management API, billing APIs, and participant API. And I have the user interface that is uh, ASP.NET Core MVC application. It's a web application. And it's based on container. We will deploy all uh, after we will push them on container. Here we select multiple startup project to be able to start all application APIs and the web application together. As you can see here, if we build our solution, we are pushing locally an image. We will check that on Docker Desktop to see. Here we have a Docker file generated by default when you create your solution. Every solution has its own Docker file, as you can see here. And now, 
we will open Docker Desktop to check our images. I will start by containers. Here, as you can see, conference management, first API, second API, my user interface. And here we have my images that are ready to be used. We open PowerShell and I add Docker images to see my images. Here we have the repository, the image ID, the tag and everything. I will create a, a new application inside the solution. It's a .NET application. We use .NET CLI. Here we use a .NET new web API. As you can see, we will open now Visual Studio Code to open the folder where we created the, our application. So we give, we select the folder here and we see how we can push, compile, build Docker images using Docker, Docker uh, using Visual Studio Code. Here we will add Docker, add Docker file, we will add our files we select the operating system, we select the power 500, I will add 500 5000 and as you can see the file is already created I will say yes to add the docker compose file, we will see that after we needed to deploy our solution after to push it to the registry, public or private registry. Now I will try to make it more clear here as you can see and we select terminal, we will compile our application, we use .NET build After we will run this solution and we will see in Docker Desktop if we have the images, our image already. Now we will use Docker image, build image, we will build our image. and. We will check after Docker desktop. Here we can run, but uh, we don't need to run. Here we can find uh, our images already uploaded. We have the previous image that we pushed before. That we compiled it and we ran it before uh, our images here. And this is what we are using now. Conference Solution Visual Studio, as you can see here. I will use uh, Docker Run to run my image. We can use Azure CLI or Interactive. And we will select uh, the image. Here, this is our image. The tag that we need late stack. We use only one tag here. As you can see it's running here. And uh, I will check uh, now Docker Desktop uh, to find my image here as you can see. If we try to select container my image is here. My container is here. So we can see the image history in the log. Now we will tag an image. To do that, we will go back to PowerShell and I will clear this window and I will use this command line. Docker image. I will check my image before and after I will select uh, the the repository 
and the tag want to create it to, 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 to use this we will use the latest tag to create another tag so I will use docker image tag I have my repository the tag latest and I will create a new tag named the pro prod I will check docker images to see if the tag if the tag is added here as you can see I have latest and prods now we will build and store image by using Azure Container Registry. To do that, we will start by using Azure Portal. We will create Azure Container Registry from the portal or from Visual Studio 2022. After we will push the image from Visual Studio. I will go to the portal, I will create a new research. I will go to Container, I will select Container Registry. We click on Create. It's really simple user interface friendly and I will select the subscription need to introduce all information needed here to create my container registry like research group research name location and we need to select the payment tiers here SKU I will select standard for example after we click on review and create We will click on create to create our container registry. It takes a few seconds to be created. The deployment is in progress, so we go back to our solution and we will try to push and publish my solution on Azure Container Registry that we already created before. So we go to my solution, for example, the first one. I will select uh, an API for example and we click on publish we can do the same for other APIs we click on publish we will select Azure or Docker Container Registry we will find them after we select Azure Container Registry as you can see it's not Azure App Service Container we will only contain, uh, use Azure Container Registry so we click on next I will select here my container but we can also add uh, Azure Container Registry using Visual Studio. To do that, we click on the plus and after we fill all our information needed. Here, uh, we go back to the portal to see my container already, Azure uh, Container Registry already created. And here, as I said before, uh, we can add a new Azure Container Registry from Visual Studio, not from the portal. So I click on finish. I just already selected my container registry. And you click on publish to publish my image in the registry. Azure Container Registry is a private uh, registry. It takes few seconds uh, to be publish it after we can check uh, on our portal to see if my image is ready added in the repositories or not here as you can see we the step of pushing the image to Azure Container Registry I will go back to the portal I will check in repositories and here I have my repository with a tag latest if we have more than tag, we can have more than tag. Now we'll see how we can use Azure CLI to create Azure Container Registry using CLI and push the image using Visual Studio Code. I open PowerShell. I will connect to Azure. We use AZ login here. It's really simple and secure. After we will add AZ. Is here create I define research group the name and SQ and my Azure Container Registry will be created in few seconds it's the same time we that we created using the portal it's not really complicated now we go back to Azure portal to check my container and then we go back to Visual Studio Code. We select Docker here. Here we have the list of image. 
I will select the image needed uh, and here we can connect uh, to Azure or Docker Hub. In our case, we select Azure. We have our container registry that where we will push our image and we select the image here right click on the image in the in the tag I will select for example latest and we select push we click on push to push our image here here we request which registry you want to push this image I need to select this image after enter and uh, my image will be deployed, will be pushed and deployed in this uh, registry. As you can see here, push it. We will check uh, my repository and we find uh, the second one already added. Now we will uh, build and store uh, images by using uh, Docker Hub. So we go back to Visual Studio and we see how we can do that from the, the tools of publishing in Visual Studio. It's really simple. We select Docker Container Registry in our case and we click on Next. Here we have Docker Hub. We can click here to click on Next. We need to add the username and the password and we click on Finish. And it's really simple, as you can see here. For Visual Studio Code, we have the same thing. It's really simple too. So here we click on Docker Hub. I need to introduce the same information added before. So the username, the password. And we select here for example here we have docker as you can see we have our registry and we click on click, right click push I will push to docker app it takes few seconds to to be pushed to docker app we'll check that here as you can see here And we have the tag that we already pushed it before. And uh, we will finish now by pushing images using Docker Compose. We start with, with Visual Studio to create a Docker Compose file. Uh, it's really simple to do that. Just right click on any project if you want to to add the file. We click on add. We use container extractor and click on OK. I can do that for every solution that we have and the file docker compose will add our project needed to be pushed together. It's for multiple container here because it's microservices application we have many services to push so we need one file to push what we did before is every file we use the push of Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code but here it's really more simple to do that we use AZ we need to connect to our container registry we use AZ SAR login we need to enable admin user here this is the command line as it is at login I give a name to my container registry and we will use docker compose push thank you for joining me today